Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are looking at another from the Little Golden Book series. How many of these are there anyways? I want to say at this point there's got to be a couple hundred because they keep making them. Yeah, we found some new ones recently. Very new. Like, frozen new. So this is The Very Best Home for Me by Jane Werner Watson. Pictures by Garth Williams. Yeah, it has this wonderful illustration of a rabbit, a dog, and a kitten, all dressed in cute little outfits, like a polka dot apron on the rabbit while she's washing dishes, and the dog's wearing a pair of red overalls while he's carrying dishes over to what I'm assuming is the sink for the bunny to wash, or rabbit to wash, and the kitten has a broom with a skirt with purple lines and X's on it. All right, author and artist. Jane Warner Watson has written many golden books. Among them are Whales, Dinosaurs, and a series of read-together books for parents and children that include My Friend the Babysitter, My Friend the Doctor, and Sometimes I'm Afraid. I don't remember reading any of those. Mm. Garth Williams' endearing artwork has enhanced many popular golden books, including such favorites as The Friendly Book, Home for a Bunny, The Sailor Dog, and Three Bedtime Stories. Once upon a time, in a small house deep in the woods, lived a lively family of animals. These front two pages are very well illustrated. I like the little house and the way it's done, with the big trees around it, and how it's framed by two bigger trees in the foreground. The animals are all working around a house. I see a turtle. I'm, not, I'm thinking that's the dog right behind the biggest tree in the foreground. Mm -hmm. And there's a squirrel in the background, with a bunny just in front of that, raking some leaves. There's lots of tall grass, and a lot of big trees, and a couple of small trees, too, right near the house. There were Miss Kitty and Mr. Pup, Brown Bunny, Little Chick, Fluffy Squirrel, Pokey Turtle, and Tweeter Bird. Each had his little chest and his little bed and chair, and they took turns cooking on their little kitchen stove. And here's some of the illustrations. From the cover, the bunny and the kitten are exactly the same as the cover, while the pup in the background is wearing a different pair of overalls and is cooking some food on the stove, while the turtle is putting a pillowcase on and helping the squirrel make the bed, while the little chick and bird are cleaning the floor. Everything's very cute and the turtle's wearing overalls. Yes, as everyone's just getting together and helping out. And wonderfully illustrated. The colors are very well done. The characters are very well rendered. And even though they haven't pointed out who is who in all of this, and even though we have two birds, I still know who everybody is. They got along nicely when it came to sharing toys, being quiet at nap times, and keeping the house neat. Hmm, those are usually things you're asking kids to do. Okay, so we're showing how well these animals are at doing things children should do. Mm-hmm. But they could not agree on food. Ooh, yeah, because everyone eats different things. When Miss Kitty cooked, they had milk and catnip tea and little bits of liver on their plates. Pup didn't mind the liver, but the rest were unhappy. Yeah, nice expressions. <laughs> and the little chick just looks confused. Like, am I supposed to drink this? I do like how everyone has like, their little stools at the right height and everything. And they're all wearing little scarves around their necks to eat, except for the chick and the bird. Mm -hmm. They all have their little bibs slash napkins. Though you don't really see one on the turtle. I think it's because he's mostly covered up, but he's also pouring stuff into another bowl? I think he grabs someone else's teacup and is pouring his tea. Hmm. They didn't like any better the bones pup served them in his turn nor Bunny's carrot dinners, or Tweeter's tasty worms, or Turtle's ant's eggs, or Squirrel's nuts. When Bunny fixed the meals, she arranged lettuce leaves and carrot nibbles with artistic taste. But only Tweeter Bird would eat any of them. And when Tweeter served worms and crisp, chewy seeds, only Little Chick would eat them. Hmm. Very nice illustrations. This illustrator is doing an excellent job with expression, posing... And just details on everything with the strokes of, I'm guessing, a brush technique because there's 
nice shading and smudging and stuff to give a real nice texture to everything. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this image of Pup, I think what you were saying about him having different overalls, I think that was actually an apron for when he was cooking. Hmm. Because notice he's still wearing it in this image where he was the one who cooked. Though this doesn't look anything like what he was cooking in the first image. Mm -hmm. And little chick liked bugs and beetles even better. Pokey Turtle would nibble at them, but what he really hungered for were tasty ants' eggs. Fluffy Squirrel wanted nuts and nuts and nuts. Without his sharp teeth and his firm paws, the others could not get a nibble from a nut, so they all went hungry when Fluffy got the meals. Oh. Ouch. And there's Fluffy just sitting there on a chair, working his way through a currant nut, and apparently there was one already cracked laying on his plate. Mm -hmm. And the empty chair next to him just illustrates that nobody else got dinner that night. Yep. Finally, they all knew something must be done. They gathered around the fire one cool and cozy evening and talked things over. I love the lighting in this particular shot. Most of them are in silhouettes except for the brightly colored ones like the chick and the cat and bunny that just the lighting in the foreground and the background... Oh, very well done. Yeah, and it's definitely evening, because if you look at the clock, it's 8 o'clock. Hmm. The home for me, said Mr. Pup, is a place where I can have bones and meat every day. I want milk and liver instead of bugs and seeds, said Miss Kitty. Nuts for me, said Squirrel. It's eggs, yawned Turtle. Crispy lettuce, whispered Bunny. A stalk of seeds, dreamed Bird and some worms make a home for me. Interesting. New homes are what we need, said Mr. Pup, and everyone agreed. Okay. <laughs> she just had a wonderful expression. Like, okay, we can't agree on what to serve for dinner, so we're going to break up the household? Interesting. Because that's not about getting along with each other or trying new things. This encourages picky eaters right here. Mm. I mean, biologically, these animals couldn't be eating the other things. Mm, though I have seen cats nibble on certain bones. Well, yes, uh, the dog and the cat are pretty close, but, you know, Bunny is definitely vegetarian. Mm hmm So, yeah, that seems like an encouragement to picky eaters right there. Yeah, but I have a feeling it's going to change around near the end of the book. So the next morning, they packed their little satchels and they said their fond goodbyes. Squirrel waved goodbye to them all, for he had decided to stay in the house in the woods. Okay. He gets everything. Yeah, that hardly seems fair. And there's a nice, wonderful illustration on the other page, though the dog's single eye kind of looks odd to me. A little bit. But everything else is nicely done. I especially like the turtle in the background and the cute walk that the chick and the bird are doing. He started right in to gather nuts. Soon there were nuts in the kitchen stove, nuts in the cupboards, nuts piled up in all the empty beds. There was scarcely room for that happy little squirrel. <laughs> he was apparently really happy because this is just nuts. Yes, and there are all different types of nuts here. I mean, look at that. That's a lot of variety right there. Yeah. I realize there were that many nuts in the woods. Well, there's probably a lot of nuts in the woods. I meant the kind you could eat. Ah. The others hopped along till they came to a garden with rows and rows of tasty growing things. Here's the home for me, said bright-eyed brown bunny, and she settled down there at the roots of a big tree. Another nice large illustration because it takes up both pages. There's a butterfly, a large tree in the background. Ooh, cabbages. And a giant carrot. Well, it's probably giant to the bunny, but don't know the proportions compared to us. And grass and a lot of green things. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully this isn't uh, Mr. McGregor's garden. Oof. Little Chick found a chicken yard full of lovely scratchy gravel where lived all kinds of crispy, crunchy bugs. Here I stay, chirped Chick, squeezing under the fence to join the other chickens there. Oh. Well, whoever has that chicken yard is going to be happy. They just got an extra chicken. Yeah. And look at all those bugs, grass... Nicely illustrated fence. That must have been fun to draw. Mm-hmm. And the chick just looks so happy. It's like, yummy bugs. And the bugs are like, oh, no! Shh. Not more. That's all we need. 
Hokey Turtle found a pond with a lovely log for napping, half in the sun, half in the shade. Close by the log was a busy, bustling ant hill, full of the eggs Turtle loved. Tweeterbird found a nest in a tree above the pond, where he could see the world, the seeds on the grasses, and the worms on the ground. This is the home for me, sang Bird happily. At least these two get to stay near each other. Mm-hmm. And the turtle looks so happy. <laughs> and so does the bird. And very nice nest, nice grasses. The technique is just very well done on this. Mm-hmm. Well, the bird found a nest and he didn't have to build it. Yeah. Well, you know, there are abandoned nests, so. Miss Kitty went on till she came to a house where a little girl welcomed her. Here's a bowl of milk for you, Miss Kitty, said the little girl, and a ball of yarn to play with. So Miss Kitty settled down in her new home with a purr. Looks like she lost the outfit. Apparently you can't be anthro if you're a pet. Apparently. Mr. Pup found a boy in the house next door. The boy had a bone and some meat for Pup, a bed for him to sleep in, and a handsome collar to wear. Bow wow, barked Pup. This is the home for me. Hmm. This is a very interesting book. That night, each one said, as he went to sleep, At last I've found the best home of all, the very best home for me. Okay. Hmm. I see you knew where this book was going. I remember liking this a lot when I was a kid, but it's like, wait a minute, this is encouraging picky eaters and separatism. <laughs> <laughs> Though... You know, you have the advantage of not everything is right for everyone, respect people's differences. But really, the only way that they could solve their problem of not liking what the other people like to eat was we all need to split up. Everyone couldn't just be responsible for their own food. I'd share all the other chores except cooking. Or they could learn to cook the other ones and just make their meals small and separate. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of room for compromise in there and problem solving and learning to do other things. But instead, hmm, we can't stand what each other likes to eat, so let's split. Yeah, you know, they could have started out the book a little differently and started with just the story of each of them finding a home that was good for them without having to start with all of them living together. Yeah, they didn't really have to be living together to be having this. I mean, it's a children's book. You could have started with, there's a group of animals traveling together, trying to find places to stay. Mm -hmm. And then each one could have peeled off as they found the home, as they do once they actually leave. Mm -hmm. But instead, they have to have this problem of, we don't like what each other cooks. And since we all take turns at cooking, this really sucks. So that part I take a little bit of issue with, but everyone exploring and finding a place that works for them where they can be happy, that's all good. Mm -hmm. I was half expecting that all of them would find a place and then they'd realize they missed the others and then they'd work on a compromise. I don't think there was enough room in the book for that. No, because about halfway through the book I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think they're going to resolve this the way I think they're going to resolve this. There's just not enough time. Little golden books aren't very long because they're meant to be small snippets and entertaining to get children interested in reading. Because mm -hmm. they're supposed to be fun and entertaining. It was fun and entertaining. Just, you know, when I was little, I was just like, oh yeah, everyone's finding the very best home for them. It's right there in the title. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it started just doesn't quite work with how we know, how we perceive storytelling now. Because to a kid, I don't think the kid would think much about that. They would just assume and go move on. I didn't think much about this either, that they all decided to go their separate ways. But now looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute, there's all sorts of children's books about not being a picky eater and being willing to try things and compromise. And we didn't have any of this here. So is it more that things have changed over time or just that they were looking at a way to have these animals together at first? Is the initial copyright is 1953, so a lot can change in 50 plus years. Mm hmm. I do like the part where they were mentioning how certain other ones enjoyed parts of the other meals. And the only meal that apparently didn't work for anyone was the squirrel. Mm hmm. And it was interesting how he was the one to stay behind. Mm hmm. I wonder if he initially owned the place and everyone else just kind of arrived at one point or the other. We don't know how they came to live in this little house in the woods. It's just 
there it's established, like most children's stories. You say a thing, and it simply is. I almost feel like there was a previous book where they all ended up at the house. Entirely possible, because this was... This is a later printing, and much like Pussy Willow, this one was originally published under a different name. It was originally published as Animal Friends. Hmm. I think this title fits better because they're all looking for their perfect home, and it's less about friendship. Mm-hmm. So I think we summed up our thoughts pretty well. Mm-hmm. This has been The Very Best Home for Me by Jane Warner Watson, pictures by Garth Williams. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, we do have several other little golden books in the Embers Reading Room series, and lots of other books overall. You can check out the playlists, choose by type, or just listen to them all, if you haven't already. You, you probably haven't. There's kind of a lot. If you'd like to track down a copy of this book for yourself, please check below. If it is in print, we will try to provide a link for purchase. Just feel like doing some shopping and seeing what you might come up with? Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and receive cash back for purchases at places you're probably already shopping. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you again for listening. <laughs>